1994 Oldsmobiles are ready to hit the road, carrying GM's latest advances in automotive technology and customer comfort. To introduce you to some of those features, this program will highlight what's new in 94 for the 88 and the Achieva. Hi, I'm Jim Scopolitis. Of course, Oldsmobile's top story in the coming year will be the all-new Aurora, targeted for release next spring. You'll be hearing plenty about the Aurora later on. But there are some exciting changes for our existing car lines, too. Like the 98, this 88 sports a new look at the front end, with a different grill, headlamps, and cornering lamps. But this year, for both the 88 and the 98, the big changes are inside. As shown on this LSS, the revised instrument panel has lots of changes, including radio and heating and air conditioning controls that feature fewer buttons and the reappearance of rotary knobs. And this radio marks the emergence of GM's small new family of radios that will soon be standardized across the divisions. Standardization will make our radio systems more familiar to customers and technicians. Here's big news. In 94, two supplemental inflatable restraints, including this new one on the passenger side, are standard equipment for all levels of the 88 and the 98. This year, larger gauges are part of the new look for the LSS. While the LS with the VF cluster gets a revised driver information center, in the LSS, the redesigned steering wheel includes a new look for the touch controls and a horn contact that's once again in the center of the wheel. This year, you'll see a central horn contact in the Achieva, the Cutlass Supreme, and the 98, too. There are more changes up front designed to please the customer. The upper-level vents can now be partially or fully shut off to customize comfort. And for hooking up a cellular phone or other electronic device, all models now have an auxiliary 12-volt outlet located near the ashtray. It's hot whenever the ignition's on. This year, the LSS gets dual-zone air conditioning with the passenger's control on the door trim. And on the driver's side, the controls for the power seat are now conveniently located on the door trim instead of on the front of the seat. The parking brake is now released the same way it's applied, by stepping on the pedal. What about safety features in 94? The hottest news, of course, is the passenger side airbag. But for 88s and 98s, with a remote keyless entry option, there's also an automatic door lock system, and it's programmable. Whenever the ignition is on, as soon as the driver shifts out of park, all doors are automatically locked. And after the drive, as soon as the shift lever returns to park, the doors are automatically unlocked. However, if the driver wants the doors to stay locked until manually unlocked, the system can be reprogrammed to make that happen by simply pressing the driver's power door lock switch while shifting out of park and back again. The instructions are in the owner's manual. Those are the main changes in the passenger compartment. The one with the most important implications for servicing is the new two airbag system. Now you'll need to disconnect both the driver's and the passenger's airbags, in addition to removing the airbag fuse before servicing any instrument panel or steering column components. And there's a change in the number and location of sensors between the 93 system shown here and the 94 system. Of course, you'll also need to disable the system before working near these sensors or their wiring. See the technician's guide that comes with this program or Section 9J of the Service Manual for more information. One more change for the 88. New enhancements in traction control. As you know, in traction control with the Tevis anti-lock brake system, the controller can pulse brakes during acceleration to counteract wheel slip and regain traction. In 1994, for the 88 and the 98, Tevis traction control now slows a spinning wheel not only through ABS braking, but through engine operation too, primarily by reducing fuel and by retarding spark. The reduction in power provides even more control over wheel slip. Oh, and one more thing. Traction control is now available at all road speeds, 
not just lower speeds as before. Incidentally, later in the year, traction control involving both brakes and engine will also be coming for the Delco ABS-6 in the silhouette, but that's a very different system. Look for a CPT program on that a few months from now. The 98 has all of these new features we've talked about and more, including an eight-speaker premium sound system. By the way, both cars, in fact, all 1994 Oldsmobiles except the Bravada, will be using the new air conditioning refrigerant R134A instead of the familiar R12. Get used to the new look. In 1994, the real headline grabber for the Achieva and the Cutlass Sierra and Cutlass Supreme is the all-new 3100 sequential fuel injection engine. In the Achieva, it's available for the S, the SL, and the Sport Coupe. Replacing the 3300 is an option. Before we get to the 3100, though, let's look at a few other changes in the Achieva. As usual, many of this car's special features are standard. In the safety column, the standard anti-lock brake system is joined in 94 by a standard airbag for the driver. The tilt steering column is also standard. Here's welcome news. In 1994, the Achieva's automatic door lock system now automatically unlocks, too, as soon as the ignition is turned off. On the other hand, to extend the safety advantages of the automatic lock, for as long as the engine is running, the 1994 system includes another change, an automatic relock feature. If a door is unlocked and open, then closed again, while the engine is still running, the door will relock. Now, what if customers prefer the previous system of automatic locking but only manual unlocking? They can have it by simply removing the door unlock fuse from the fuse block. That defeats the automatic unlock. Again, these instructions are in the owner's manual. Here's a new addition to illuminated entry, theater dimming, which turns off interior lights gradually instead of abruptly. And speaking of lights, There's now a standard underhood lamp on the Achieva. So here we are now, looking at the 3100 SFI engine, VIN code ML82. This all-new V6 engine represents a dramatic advance over the 3.1-liter VIN T used previously in the Cutlass Supreme, in performance and in better fuel economy and emissions control. Paired with the Hydromatic 4T60E transaxle, the 3100 gives terrific performance. Look at these differences in power. Here are the curves for horsepower and torque for the 1993 3.1 liter used in the Cutlass Supreme. For the new 3100 in the same car, horsepower and torque look like this. That's an increase of 20 horsepower and a much broader torque curve. At highway speeds, this kind of torque curve means when you want to pass, you've really got what it takes. Meanwhile, shifting is silky smooth, since the PCM, or powertrain control module, is precisely controlling the 3100 and the 4T60E to work together. Now, what makes this engine able to perform the way it does? One answer is some important structural changes including a new intake design. The 3100's intake passages, shown in blue in this cutaway, allow the best possible targeting of each injector at the back of its intake valve. Like the 3800 engine, the 3100 has sequential fuel injection. With SFI, instead of pulsing all six injectors simultaneously, the PCM triggers them sequentially in cylinder firing order so each injector releases fuel precisely as its inlet valve is opening. To know when the valve is opening, the PCM reads camshaft position, as reported by a cam sensor, which is located beneath the power steering pump assembly. Both precise injector targeting and sequential fuel injection reduce emissions, improve fuel economy, and help stabilize idle. Let's look more closely at the camshaft. It's an exciting new development. 
a camshaft that's assembled in production rather than created as a single unit. Assembling a camshaft allows the use of several materials instead of just one. That means we can use hardened steel for the cam lobes. Hardened steel lobes are particularly appropriate for the 3100's roller lifters, which create less friction. That saves fuel and reduces valve train noise and wear. Incidentally, these lobes provide a higher valve lift than occurs on the 3.1 liter and open and close valves more rapidly for greater engine efficiency. But besides hardened steel for the lobes, we can use machine steel for the journals for compatibility with their bearings and cast iron for the oil pump drive gear for compatibility with the pump's driven gear. Here's how assembly works. The camshaft itself is hollow. That saves weight. Once the various units are assembled on the shaft, a steel ball that's larger in diameter than the channel through the shaft is forced through the channel, expanding the shaft and permanently fixing all the parts in place. Finally, a lot of precise finishing is done. We've said the 3100's PCM uses a camshaft position sensor to learn exactly when fuel injectors should be activated. It also uses two crankshaft position sensors to determine when spark plugs should be fired and how long injectors should be open. This sensor, like the one on the 3.1 liter engine, reads crankshaft position from the seven slot reluctor built into the shaft. This is the reluctor's sink notch. Here you can see the sensor installed in the block and the sink notch. At startup, this notch tells the ignition module when the first cylinder is ready for spark. And it continues to provide the system's reference signal during operation. But now, for operating the engine below 1200 RPM, where both drivability and emissions concerns can be critical, the PCM also reads crankshaft signals from this second sensor as the 24 windows in its interrupter ring pass next to it. The ring is mounted on the harmonic balancer. This sensor provides very frequent updates about changes in engine RPM by reporting the passage of those windows. These signals allow precise control of spark timing and injector pulse duration at those lower RPM for a smoother idle, reduced emissions, and quicker starting. So much for drivability features. Now one more look at structural improvements. The 3100's rocker covers are made of a composite material, which is lighter than the usual stamped steel or aluminum, and quieter too. And there's a new die-cast aluminum oil pan that also has sound dampening qualities. Its rigidity makes it act more like part of the engine itself. Another feature helping the engine and oil pan behave like one unit is the fact that three of the crankshaft main bearing caps are bolted through the oil pan from the outside. The results are less vibration and noise and greater durability and reliability. All that adds up to a really exciting new engine. For more about the 3100, see the Certified Plus training program about it. Incidentally, beginning in 1994, the PCM for the 3100 engine and the electronic control modules for some other engines do not display diagnostic flash codes. So, for diagnosis, everyone has to use a scan tool. Two more quick points about powertrains in 1994. First, the 4T60E is now also available with the LD2 Quad 4 and the Quad OHC engines. Second, for certain engine transaxle combinations, a new rev limiter is built into the system. In park or neutral, fuel will be cut off if the engine is revved above 4,000 RPM. In Oldsmobiles, this is true for all 3100s paired with the 4T60E and all LD2 Quad 4s and Quad OHCs with the same transaxle. You may need to explain to customers that this response is not an engine problem. Well, you've had a brief introduction to the 1994 Achieva and 88. I'll wind up with one last point about the new tires on our new vehicles. While most tire warranty questions should be directed to the tire manufacturer, 
Oldsmobile dealerships must make sure that tire-related problems are promptly resolved to the customer's satisfaction. In some cases, this may mean we need to deal with the tire company on the customer's behalf. The companies themselves offer warranty assistance programs available through 1-800 phone numbers. See the technician's guide for these numbers and a review of tire warranty procedures. After all, from the ground up, customers have the right to expect the best product and the best service from all of us in the Oldsmobile organization. See you next time.